Thank you and good morning. My name is Ed Bianchi and I am program manager at Kairos. Kairos is a coalition of 10 Christian churches and religious organizations that work on human rights and ecological justice here in Canada and around the world. Today we're here with some of our partners from the Philippines to talk about how mining companies negatively impact their lives and livelihoods. They are here in Canada on a Cairo-sponsored six-city tour to help Canadians understand how Canadian mining companies impact their human rights and their environment negatively. And also to talk to Canadians of what, about what the Canadian government can do about that. Two of the speakers we have today are from the island of Mindanao in the Philippines. In 2014, Cairo sponsored a learning tour to the island of Mindanao to learn more about the impact of Canadian mining companies on their rights and on their lands. Bishop Antonio Ablom is a bishop in the Philippine Independent Church in the Diocese of Pagadayan in Mindanao. He is an outspoken critic of the operations of Canadian mining companies and especially about the increased number of killings in areas where mining companies operate and where threats and acts of intimidation by the Philippine military and paramilitary groups are unfortunately all too often. Nanita Condes is indigenous Subanan and lives in Mindanao. She is Deputy Secretary General of the SGS, a federation of indigenous Subanan groups. Since 1996, the Subanan have been dealing with Canadian mining companies on their ancestral lands. Carlos Zarate is a representative in the Philippine House of Representatives and Vice President of the Mindanao National Union of People's Lawyers. And Emily Dwyer coordinates the Canadian Network on, ne on Corporate Accountability. The CNCA works to ensure that Canadian mining, oil, and gas companies respect human rights and the environment when operating abroad. We will begin with some words from Ninita Condes, and Bishop Ablon will translate. I will be translating. And Congressman Carlos Zarate will translate. Yeah. Ako si Ninita Condes, Osaka leader Subanin sa Sambuanga Peninsula, Western Mindanao Region. I am uh, Ninita Condes. I am a leader of the Subanan tribe in Sambuanga Peninsula, Western Mindanao Region, the Philippines. Kaming mga lumad Subanin ang biktima sa operasyon sa ma Canadian Mining Company nga mao ang TBI. We, the members of the Subanan tribe, are victims of the large-scale mining operations of a Canadian mining company named uh, Toronto Ventures Incorporated. Ang TBI may ako pa og libuan kahektarya sa kayutaan og mipalayas sa libuan ka mga subanin og mga mag-uuma og may biktima sa pagpamatay sa gatosan sa mga subanin og mga mag-uuma. The TBI uh, resources development occupied thousands and thousands of hectares and uh, resulted to the displacement of also thousands and thousands of our fellow indigenous peoples uh, and farmers and they were displaced and uh, some were uh, actually even killed Uh, during uh, in these operations of the mining company. Ang DBI migamit siya og military sa Pilipinas og mi organisa sila og paramilitary sa amo ang komunidad nga mao'y aktibo nga naga nagaabog sa mga subanin og nagapatay sa mga subanin. Uh, to protect their interests in the Philippines, the uh, TVI uh, use the military the armed forces of the Philippines, and they also organized paramilitary forces to harass, intimidate, and even kill some of my uh, fellow indigenous people so that we will leave our place, and in fact, up to now, we were displaced from our ancestral land. Hangtod karon ang mga subanin o ang mga mag-uuma 
Wala na kauli sa amo ang komunidad. Nagatubang og grabing kalisod, mibunga og grabing kagutom og bisan mismo nga ako usa ka leader uh, kanunay nga gibaharan sa mga military nga patyon og dili nagawas nun mo uli sa among komunidad. Up to now many of us uh, were not even able to return to our ancestral lands because of the, what happened to our communities. We were uh, told to leave our communities, we were displaced even myself i am the leader of our uh, tribe i am not free to return to my community because i am threatened my life is threatened so i am uh, just like many of our uh, uh, fellow indigenous peoples uh, i am not yet able to return to my community tungod sa pagpangyatak og Tungod sa grabing harassment sa TBI ug militarisasyon ang mga lumad mikaton sa pagbarog mikaton sa pagorganisa hangtod nga dili na mo mabasol ang mga uban sa mga lumad nga migunit og armas and because of this continuing harassment threat intimidation to us oppression on our people uh, we will learn how to also resist no we organize ourselves into organizations in fact because of this continuing intimidation and threats on us some of our uh, fellow indigenous peoples even joined the uh, uh, rebel groups just to protect themselves ug ani ami karon diri aron hata mga yo og hostesya nga maimbestigahan ang TBI, ang mining company nga may operate sa among nasod ug may resulta og grabing violation. And so we are here now in Canada to seek for justice not only for myself but also for my people uh, for what they uh, uh, this Canadian company the TBI did to our community the human rights violations that uh, they did to us and uh, that is why we are seeking for justice here. So makalaumi nga mismo ang gobyerno sa Canada muhatag og hostesya sa mga biktima sa amo ang nasod. And uh, we hope that the, the government, the Canadian government uh, can give us the opportunity to seek justice here in Canada because of what uh, the TVI did to us. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop. I am Bishop Antonio Ablon <coughs> of the Philippine Independent Church and uh, I am here together with the indigenous peoples uh, leaders in the Philippines because we want the Canadian people to know our story and we want that foreign corporations operating in the Philippines especially those who are Canadian mining companies to be held accountable in their complicities in the commission of human rights violations against our um, people um, these uh, Canadian companies are coming to our place and they collaborated with the uh, 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 government of the Republic of the Philippines and they hired um, uh, civilians in a uh, special uh, uh, auxiliary army and they uh, paid them uh, to demolish our people the the subanen the the indigenous peoples from their uh, area uh, for them to to operate the mining uh, uh, operation uh, there is a deception um, which um, they said uh, we have the permit we have the consent that the so-called uh, free prior and informed consent from the indigenous peoples but what happened is that in order to get the signatures or the consent one they would uh, intimidate they would harass they would gunpoint uh, on the leaders of the indigenous people second uh, they would uh, identify another uh, indigenous who is not the genuine leader of of the indigenous peoples in the land just to make them sign and cooperate uh, and uh, those who are against the the in trans entry of the mining companies they are harassing them just like what uh, ninita has um, told us and the effect of the people they have not been back to their uh, homes their places and they lost their uh, way of of living and they are scattered now in their families uh, away from the very source of their lives which is the land and Aside from that, we want that the Philippine laws and the armed forces 
uh, of the Philippines to promote and protect the Filipino people's civil, socio-economic, and political rights, not international trade or investments at the expense of those rights, at the expense of our uh, people's rights, at the expense of the communities of the indigenous uh, people uh, in our land in the Philippines. Thank you. In uh, 2014, I mentioned that Cairo sponsored a tour to the Philippines, and uh, we gathered information there from community groups, from community members, from government representatives, from people who work for the company that the uh, speakers have mentioned. And gathering that information, following that investigation, we called on the Philippine government to stop all mining in the area until they could ensure the safety of the people and also to investigate those human rights allegations, um, violations. We also, in Canada, worked with others to call on the Canadian government to um, legislate in um, human rights extractive center, sector ombudsperson with the power to investigate and to address these claims. And also we called on the government to legislate and facilitate access to Canadian courts for those people overseas who are claiming that their rights have been violated by Canadian companies. Um, I'm wondering if there if we have any questions for any of the uh, speakers. Ed, I'm wondering if, uh, if you could tell me uh, who we are planning on meeting at this delegation. We're meeting in Ottawa with ministers at all? Yes, that, that's correct. The, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's a six-city tour. So in addition to Ottawa, we're also uh, traveling to, the delegates are traveling to Toronto, Montreal, Winnipeg, Edmonton, and Calgary. Uh, here in Ottawa, we have been meeting with uh, members of parliament uh, from all the parties and also with uh, members of the standing committees. And uh, we are hoping that uh, in Calgary, we are still exploring the possibility of meeting with representatives from the TVI Pacific. Uh, I wonder if the bishop could, could uh, uh, respond to this. What do you expect of, of the uh, uh, religious communities? You're here as an Anglican, a uh, large Anglican <coughs> yep. population in Canada. What would you anticipate? Uh, uh, what would you say to them about this? Um, Anglican Communion or the Anglican world have been with us uh, uh, in the ministry and we've been uh, doing uh, things for the people. So right now in, in our trip in Canada, uh, we expect that our counterparts, our brothers and sisters Anglicans here, will particularly support our call uh, for the justice for the indigenous people. and. Uh, to help us echo uh, the stories of uh, the, uh, the, the uh, plight of our Lumads in, in Mindanao and in uh, of all the, the country in the Philippines. Have you yourself uh, received any uh, threats because of your position on this? Yes, there have been many threats and in fact um, during the 2014 Philippine Learning Tour uh, after we announced uh, to the media that they are coming, the Canadian people are coming, um, two days after, my bedroom uh, in the convent was ransacked. It was, uh, I was lucky I was not there uh, on that uh, night. And many other uh, kinds of threats to, to my life. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, Senor, um, what kind of, when you talk about threats, you've had threats on your life. I have been threatened by the military and paramilitary groups that I will be killed because of uh, my participation in organizing my people and leading, uh, leading my people in resisting uh, the incursion of uh, mining companies in my in our ancestral land. So, 
How are you reacting to this? Do you, you have special protection? So, ang say, himo ni mo, giprotektahan ba daw ka sa gobyerno o nagtago-tago? Ang nahitabo, uh, ang ila ang pagpanghadlok, ning hatag na ko og kadasig sa, pag, so, sa, sa pagsalmot sa organisasyon, sa pagbarog. Tungod kay ang gobyerno mismo, hawid nila ang military, o walay protection sa ako, uh, maskin ang, uh, ang ahensya ng NCIP, Indigenous People Commission. Commission. Uh, walay gihimo para maimbestigahan ang mga biktima sa mga lumad sa amo ang area. So I, I, I get strength from uh, our organization uh, because I cannot expect uh, support or uh, protection even from our government because the very agency, for example, the Commission on Indigenous Peoples that supposedly will protect us, do not even protect us. It did not even investigate the complaints that we uh, lodged to them, especially the human rights violations committed by paramilitary troops. You mentioned uh, a Toronto mining company. Uh, what has their response been to criticism about their ventures in the Philippines? So, uh, kinikunong Toronto Ventures, uh, unsa may gihimo nila nga na may mga pagsaway sa ilahang operasyon dito na ba sila gihimo mga gitarong ba nila ilang operasyon? Padayon ang ilaang uh, paramilitary ug ang militar karon sa ilaang giako pa nga lugar padayon ang ilang mga militar dito ug nagahasi sa katawhang lumad wala sila gihimo para mahatagan kami ug hostesya Nothing. Despite these criticisms, they continue to harass us. There is no justice. They continue to use the military uh, and the paramilitary troops to harass us. Anyone, are you optimistic there will be any improvement as a result of uh, your appearance here in, in Canada? Well, in, uh, in particular, uh, we have been uh, supportive of the call also of uh, our Canadian friends here. Uh, from Kairos and other organizations for calling on the uh, Canadian government to establish a, uh, a ombudsperson for extractive companies that will make a, a help accountable uh, these Canadian uh, firms that are operating in our country um, and to let uh, people like uh, Nanita to have access uh, here in Canada uh, to call for the accountability of these Canadian companies. We have been have meetings with uh, members of parliament and other uh, staff of the Global Affairs Committee and uh, some were very uh, uh, encouraging uh, and uh, we will continue uh, to push for uh, this campaign so that uh, justice for these ind indigenous peoples will be uh, given. Any final comments from you? <clears throat> Just that um, that Kairos is uh, fully supporting the uh, Subanan people and all the people who are impacted by the mining operations in the Philippines, and that we are looking at uh, working closely with them going forward to ensure that uh, justice is finally served. Uh, I think it's important too that um, to recognize that we work with lots of partners, uh, not just uh, around, the, not just in Canada, but around the world. But in Canada, one of the partners that we work with is the Corporate Network for uh, Corporate Accountability, the Canadian Network for Corporate Accountability. And uh, Emily Dwyer, I'm going to ask her to say a few words, just in relation to the um, calls uh, to the government for the creation of an extractive center sector ombudsperson and uh, legislative access to the courts because we believe strongly that that will um, make a big difference in terms of you know ensuring that these people's rights uh, aren't trampled on so Emily Dwyer thank you very much to, to everyone who's spoken today um, and I think that uh, no one who is hearing these accounts cannot be moved by the impact that it has on their communities and their livelihoods and, and, their, and their rights and the extreme risks that they're taking even in coming to Canada to speak to this. So I do hope that our, our government and the members who they've met with have been, have been motivated. I think it's also important to note that the what's happening in, in the Philippines and the accounts that they're talking about are not isolated to the Philippines. We're hearing continuously and have been for over a decade hearing accounts of widespread credible allegations of serious human rights abuses associated with Canadian mining companies around the world. And I think that it's particularly important to highlight that this tour um, of, of this week is uh, bringing up some 
is raising similar accounts to what uh, led to the standing Foreign Affairs Standing Committee um, recommendations back in 2005. The Canadian government and, and Canadian Parliament has been hearing calls from around the world for, for over 12 years to develop accountability mechanisms and have yet to implement any credible mechanisms. The all of the major uh, political parties made commitments to establish a, uh, an extractive sector human rights ombudsperson if they were elected. This was included in the in the Liberal Party of, of Canada's uh, commitments. Um, the the budget that we that came down came out yesterday includes absolutely no reference to an ombudsperson and no reference to business and human rights. Um, we continue to. Uh, be informed that the, that the Canadian government intends to act on its commitments and intends to to create an, an extractive sector ombudsperson, but we're very disappointed not to have seen anything in the budget yesterday. Thank you, Emily. Are there any other questions? Did you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just just one last point. Uh, um, aside from uh, uh, our our trip here is of course about the accountability of our mining companies, Canadian mining companies. But we are also calling uh, for the Canadian government to play an active role in the ongoing uh, peace processes here in the in the now in the Philippines between the. Uh, government of the Republic of the Philippines and the National Democratic Fronts, because there are already advances, and I hope uh, and I, I know that uh, uh, there are uh, the, the uh, Canadian, Canadian government and uh, the Philippine government had good relations, and uh, this good relation between these two countries can possibly be used no? uh, in ad further advancing the peace process in the Philippines, uh, including, uh, of course, giving solution to what is now happening in uh, uh, for the socioeconomic reforms and what is happening now in our region in Mindanao. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no more questions, then? Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs>